Good morning, TGIF, and welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to another Friday. My name is Frank Allen, and we're in the midst of a brand new coffee hour show. We're on every Friday at this time between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern. And of course, we're here every Friday to entertain you, and you can enjoy us by joining in as well. All you have to do is, uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, ideas, or anything that you want to say, throwing out topics or anything, just to interact with us. That's why we're here. And you can do that. I will see you right there up on the big screen. And I will entertain all of your thoughts and ideas and your questions and whatever have you. So thank you so much for being with us. It's a Friday. We did say that. And of course, it's the last day of your work day for most of you. And those of you who have to work on a Saturday, just figure this it's a job that someone else would like to have. So you have it. Okay. Any event, we're still here and we're going to be here. And those of you who are watching us all around the world, that's where we are. No matter where you roam, that's where we are. We're going to be right there with you. And uh, because we're coming through uh, Facebook, we're coming through YouTube, and we're also coming through Instagram. And I want to say hello to all of you people who are watching us on those three different entities. Now, I want to explain something. We're not broadcasting live here on YouTube. We're broadcasting live on Instagram and YouTube. I'm sorry, I, I mixed that up. I was supposed to say Facebook. We're not broadcasting on Facebook today. I'm going to explain that because we have been locked up once again in the Facebook jail. And I'll tell you more about that uh, later on in the program on what happened and uh, how long we're going to be out of Facebook. But in the meantime, we're here on YouTube. We thank you for being along with us. And we're here on Instagram too, my friends there. Now, I've already uh, directed everyone who will follow me on my Facebook page. I posted this morning, you know, the show, as I always do, the show that comes on, it'll be on at 10 a.m. And uh, you can, and I gave a, um, a link, which would direct you here to YouTube, so you won't miss the show. But those of you who normally watch the show on Facebook, we are going to post the show right after this show is over live. We're going to post it on Facebook and so you'll get a chance to see it. So this is how it's going to be for a while. We'll tell you more about that. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, we get together and uh, enjoy ourselves, have a little coffee and sit back, relax. So ladies and gentlemen, excuse me while I shoot up. Delicious, delicious, great, great coffee. That's what I like. Later on in the program, Brian Kent will be here not too far away. He's part of the 2020 feature. He'll be here 20 past the hour. And he'll bring you the latest developments in today's world of sports. DJ Pete, normally aboard with us 20 to the hour. His part of the 2020 feature will not be here today, but uh, he left me his information uh, for today. So we're going to cover that all for him. I love when these guys are here with us, but sometimes they have to take off and uh, uh, he just checked in on Facebook. He might have changed his mind. I don't know. He just checked in on, on uh, I see him, he just checked in on uh, Instagram. So, hey, he, he, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what he says. We'll see what he says. Uh, but any event, we thank you guys for being here with us uh, for this day. And uh, we would like you to tell your friends about the show. You know, anytime uh, you see your friends, you could do that anytime you like. You can uh, get them, uh, bring them in, tell them about the show we're broadcasting here on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and DJ Pete is just watching today. So, no, he's not going to be here today. He's just watching. He's just, he just want to make sure everything is okay. Everything is going to be okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, tell your friends about, it. you know, get, get them aboard with us um, and uh, just uh, come on. We're right here. We're right here right now on YouTube and Instagram. So um, please uh, be aware of that. It's four minutes past the hour. Can you believe that? I, I it, Time is really going fast. I don't believe that we've been here already four minutes already, four minutes uh, past the hour. And, um, and it's the coffee hour. That's what we're talking about. Hey, listen, guys, if you're going to chime in today with us, we really would appreciate that. And if you want to sit idle, that's OK, too, just as long as you're enjoying the show. But if you chime in, you know, we'd like to uh, welcome new people and some of them, maybe our regulars come in when they uh, want to say something. Give us your weather forecast if you have one. Give us your weather forecast and, and let us know how it's going. And uh, of course, we'll read it off right here. But if you're living in New York, don't worry about that. 
Don't worry about the New York weather. I'll take care of that. that that'll, I'll, you're in safe hands. I'll take care of all the weather report here in New York. Uh, but the rest of you, if you're out of town, out of, out of the country, someplace else around the world, uh, give us your weather forecast. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you already know, we always talk about what's happening as far as the virus is concerned. We're still in the midst of it. You know, there's no question about that. Uh, and the United States already declared that it's kind of subsiding a little bit. So uh, they're thinking sooner or later, and as the weather get warmer, it should get a little better. Uh, everyone goes maskless, all right? But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, you know, take everything in stride. You don't want to just rip off your mask just like that. All right, you want to take things in stride. But they say there's less hospitalization, uh, there's less uh, uh, cases among us. And those of you who are vaccinated, uh, you are unlikely to meet one of those criteria, like wind up in a hospital or anything like that. But uh, it, if you feel sick, of course, you want to take a test and make sure that you're uh, on the, uh, the negative side. But if you're positive, you take the test, you stay home for about 10 days in quarantine. And then uh, after that, after that period is over, go back and take the test again to make sure that you're negative. And uh, then this way it will be great. Now, as you already know, we have three different kinds of vaccines on the market. I need to tell you that, but I just say it anyway. We have Pfizer, we have Moderna, and we have J&J, &J, which is known as Johnson and Johnson. Now, those three vac vaccines, they're all good. Uh, they work differently, though, in a way, as far as dosage is concerned. If you're taking Pfizer and Moderna, there's a two dosage to, to declare you uh, fully vaccinated. After six months after your initial doses, then you are eligible to take your booster shot, which is, of course, we recommend that. Now, those of you who take J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson, that's a one-shot deal. And two months after that, you will be eligible to get your booster shot. So there you have it. Now, a lot of you haven't taken the booster, not even the shot, you know, and we urge you to do that. A lot of people are saying, well, you know something, I'm not going to do it. I refuse to do it. A lot of people are saying that. And it's a matter of choice. But we would just like you to know uh, when you do that, you're helping everyone else out. The quicker you do it, the more people do it, the faster we can get it all under control and possibly get it out of our lives completely. There are so many things going on, and we don't want one of these things to be the problem with us. Because I remember, and you remember, of course, when it first started, when you look outside your window, no one was out there. It was dangerous. No one would go out there unless it was absolutely necessary. Everybody was practicing the six feet distance, and everyone was wearing their mask and using hand sanitizer. And back then, when it first started, hand sanitizer and those uh those wipes that were hard to come by, paper towels that were hard to come by, people were hoarding them and loading them up in their trucks and their cars and their vans and taking them home. But they looked like they were getting ready to stock a warehouse or something. That's how it was then. And you couldn't find anything. And everybody thought they were in trouble about it when they couldn't find anything. But now we have plenty of, uh, of hand sanitizer and wipes and paper towels. When you go to your grocery stores and your supermarkets, they're all right there. Uh, but uh, continue to wear your mask in the meantime. Now, if you're taking public transportation, of course, public transportation, they're going to tell you you should, you should wear your mask. You really should, uh, because you have a lot of people all clustered together. And of course, you want to make sure that you're protecting each other while you're on. Now, if you don't have a mask when you get on, Ask the bus driver or the conductor on the train. They may have a supply along with them. But that's something that you should never forget when you walk out of your house. As a matter of fact, that should be as normal as, let's say, taking your cell phone. You're never going to forget your cell phone, right? You're never going to forget that. You're never going to forget your keys. And you're never going to forget your wallet. So the thing I would suggest is that you pack everything in one little bag or whatever. And you'll have it right there for you. You don't have to miss a thing. A lot of people are smart, though. What they do is that uh, they prepare them, their, their, their day. Let's say in the evening, they pack up everything that they're going to take with them and, and put it in one bag or whatever. The ladies, they put everything in one bag. You know, they're smart. They do that. 
And this way, when they walk out the door, they know they won't forget anything. So the cell phone goes in there, the wallet goes in there, the keys go in there, and the mask should go in there. And this way, you won't forget it. Now, there are suggesting that you no longer wear the cloth mask. But I say a cloth, a cloth mask is better than no mask at all. They're suggesting now you get the higher grade, the upper grade masks like the K95, the MK95, those, uh, those sophisticated masks they use. A lot of people are getting those. They're hard to come by, ladies and gentlemen, unless, of course, you go online on um, uh, Instagram, uh, not Instagram, I'm talking about Instagram. If you go online to uh, Amazon, you can get them uh, through that. And if you can't find any of, any of those upgraded masks, double up on the regular ones. You know, you see the regular ones, double up, good. use two of them. That's what I do, you know, because uh, a lot of people, they kind of neglect or they kind of like not want to go online to order anything. So if that's the case, you know, uh, double up your, your regular mask. But um, whatever you can do to stay healthy, stay alive and, and stay safe and stay, uh, make sure everyone else stays safe. That's what we appreciate. That's, that's, that's all we're talking about, if you can do that. So that would be a good thing if you can do that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's now uh, 11 minutes past the hour, and the name of the show is called The Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me while I shoot up. Okay, now those of you who are looking for places to go, let's say to get vaccinated, uh, there are a lot of places. All right, first of all, your primary doctor may have a uh, supply of the dosage that you need. And he can administer that to you when you go to his office. You could also go to your famous, uh, your favorite pharmacist. Uh, they have supplies of, uh, uh, of those vaccinations, of those vaccines. Uh, there are centers that supply them. Uh, if you're choosy and you rather have, let's say uh, Pfizer, rather than Moderna, Moderna rather than Pfizer or j, j rather than the two of those, you know, you have your choices. It's all, it's a, I guess it's a matter of where you go to find these uh, vaccines. But I'm here to tell you that all of these vaccines are good. They're all good. It's just that the j and j is a one-shot deal and your booster shot comes like two months after that. And the uh, Moderna and the Pfizer, there's two shots. And then your booster, that's the third shot comes after six months, after the initial shots, okay? So that's all you have to do. And if you don't know where to go, it's a matter of Googling, Google, Google. Find out where the nearest place nearest you, the place nearest you, where you can find um, vaccinations outlet, vaccinating outlets, and you can go do that. Uh, Google, find out where to go to, uh, to get uh, tested if you need to be tested. And if you're feeling sick, again, please go get tested until you find out that you're negative and then you'll be okay after that. Uh, so th that's the way it goes. So if you have places in your area, please uh, you know, follow them up. Now I have something, uh, information for people and this is, this is New York, this is all New York here. Uh, and we'll get into the rest of it later, but this is New York here. But these are for Moderna users only. Only Moderna uses, this is what they have right now. I'm sorry they don't have the rest, but this is what we have right now. But all information is good that I give you. Uh, Moderna boosters and the COVID-19 PCR testing is now available at the following stations. And that's right here in New York where I am. Times Square Station at 42nd Street, passageway between the Lexington Avenue line and the Lexington Avenue Grand Central Shuttle. That's Monday through Sunday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the... Grand Central Terminals, street level, that's 89 East 42nd Street, and that's Monday through Sunday between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. No appointment is necessary. You can go there and just do it right there. And um, I also encourage you to check out their website for uh, scheduling updates because, you know, everything is subject to change, locations are subject to change, and you can have that, and you can go there and keep it, keep it where handy, put it in your cell phone. This website is called new, new.mta.info slash vax. That's new.mta.info slash vax. 
and you can go there anytime you like just to make sure to keep up to see if there are any changes. Uh, it's, I don't know if there are any, if, the, if any changed or not, but the information I just read to you, that's what it is. But at least you have that website and you can get in touch with the people there. You can call people. I also have a telephone that I also give out each week. It's a telephone number. And if you're watching us on YouTube right now, right there in the uh, chat section, chat area, right up there, very top. And you'll see yeah, there's a lot of information there. It's my email address, my telephone number. And underneath all of that, you have uh, what they call the COVID-19 test. That's the COVID-19 test. It's a hotline number. It's a hotline number. And it's, I would assume it's 24 hours. Someone is standing by. You could talk to someone live and talk to them. Now, you know, if you're out of town, you're out of the country, this number still will probably give you a roadmap to someplace else. But locally, it's here in New York. The number is 718-638-7682 for the benefit of the people who are watching us on Instagram and, of course, uh, uh, YouTube. And again, that number is 718-638-7682. That's 718-638-7682. Now, if you have information in your area, sometime in your area, you may have, well, uh, a, a place where people might be interested, like local people. Let's say, for instance, if you're living in Europe someplace and you have information you like to uh, convey to me, I will be glad to uh, uh, recite it here for the people who may be watching the show where you are and not even knowing you, but at least they'll have that information. So all information is it's, it's welcome. OK, you can do that as because you say, OK, look, you know, you're giving us the local stuff where you are in New York. What about over here in Baltimore? What about over here in, in, in uh, Arizona or something like that? I'm going to count on you to give me that information if you have it, and I will read it off to you. That's all. And all you have to do to do that, if you don't want to do it now, you don't want to type it in, uh, do it live. A lot of people don't want to do it live. That's OK. Uh, I have a couple of uh, other sources that you can get in touch with me with. Yet, I have a telephone number and an email address that uh, you can do. Well, I'll, I'll give you the email address first. If you would like to email me that information, it's frankallenprod at aol.com. Again, that's frankallenprod at aol.com. Allen is spelled A-L-L-A-N. Prod is P-R-O-D. That's short for productions. Frank Allen Prod at AOL.com. That's Frank Allen Prod at AOL.com. Or you may call me. The number is 641 715 3900, extension 467 134. That's 641 715 3900, extension 467 134. You can leave a message there and be welcome to use that information just to say hi to or just to uh, make your comments suggestions and ideas or maybe questions about the show or whatever you know that's my personal uh information and you can get right on it and and do that right away so ladies and gentlemen in the meantime follow those uh those safety tips wear your mask especially if you're going to go mass transit or you're going to fly or anything like that. A lot of places are dropping the mandate for wearing masks publicly. A lot of people are doing that. Uh, they've done that here in New York, but a lot of establishments are still not comfortable with dropping it all together and that's their right to do that. Uh, go by what they say and everything will be fine. But before you know it, we'll be with all, we'll be, over with all of this. I have confidence that we'll be over with all of this and uh, we can go back to normal and live normal like everyone else. It's 19 minutes past the hour. We're looking forward to talking to Brian in just about a minute from now, a uh, sports update, uh, the latest developments in today's world of sports. Uh, later on in the program too, we have all of those movies that you like. You know, all of those great movies, all of those wonderful movies, those classic movies, Return to Classic Movies. I have a few that I'm going to, uh, uh, hip you to later on because the weekend is here. And once uh, we get by the weekend, you already know that uh, it's time we have the entertainment movie time and everything like that. That's all uh, here for you. And we've got that coming up right away. 
We'll talk about that a little later on, but right now I'm going to go over to Charlotte, North Carolina, and the weather is great out there. We, he had 80 degrees yesterday. I want to see what he's got today. Brian Camp with the latest developments in today's world of sports. Tell me some good news. Well, good news for here. I can't say what's <laughs> good news for New York City, but here in the Queen City of Charlotte, it's 53 degrees right now, going up to a high of 67 degrees. So, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be nice weather. To, to, a, a little chilly uh, compared to yesterday. It was in the 80s yesterday. Uh, now it's, it's going to be a little chilly. We have a little little chill front, but I'll still take the 66 degrees anytime, any place, anywhere. So, yes. Uh, good morning to you, to everybody out there listening. Hope all is well. Hope everybody's being safe. And um, let me get right to the sports. We got a lot to talk about. Major League Baseball. Uh, first, let's talk about Derek Jeter. He announced that he has stepped down as CEO of the Miami Marlins after shareholder Jeter, the Hall of Fame shortstop, who enjoyed 20 glorious years with the New York Yankees, was joined by Bruce Sherman, led group that purchased the Marlins from Jeffrey Laurie, who was the owner of the Miami Dolphins football team for $1.2 billion in September 2017. Jeter was given a stake only from um, only for 4%. So you know, he was only a 4% shareholder in the franchise stake. Now we'll give up. Uh, now that was him being running the everyday business operations for baseball, but he's given it up. He's stepping away um, at the fourth full season as um, part owner. He only compiled a record of 218 wins and 327 losses. It's only my guess why he's stepping away. Um, first of all, number one, the team never did well in Florida. Florida is known as a football state. It's not a baseball state. Um, they don't. They did not draw well with attendance. As you know, there is um, going to be a, a holdout, as we're going to talk about in a second. And the owners just are not making money right now. So um, so even if they lose money, they still be filthy rich. So um, he's stepping away for that. Now, to the other side, we're in the midst of, of a shutdown. The Major League Baseball has announced this week there's going to be two regular season series that's going to be postponed after Major League Baseball Players Association, the union, um, rejects the league's final proposal with, with the owners. The players and, own, and owners unable to, to agree on a contract to replace the, a collective bargain agreement, which, which is up, was, was the expiration date was just passed last December. And now the season will, will now have 156 games instead of the 162. In all total, it will be 91 games that will be erased for the first series. Um, so that's where we are. They trying to hope to get some kind of meeting together. They're trying to get where they could um, come together and try to come to an agreement. But right now, talks are far apart. The owners are always going to win. The owners are going to win each and every time. And so um, stay tuned. Um, the National Hockey League, the uh, International Ice Hockey Federation, has banned Belarus and Russia from participating in, in, in every age category and in all of the IIHF competitions until further notice as, as has been pulled from 2023 World Junior Hockey Championship from Russia. As you know, we have, when they're in the midst of war, an, an award, not we as a country, but um, as part of sports where there are American players that's do, that plays overseas. Um, the a decision was made at a meeting um, of the IIHF Council on Monday in reaction to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. These actions has been initiated by the council in order to enable the IIHF to ensure the safety of the IIHF championships and all the participating players. The event is currently, currently scheduled to be held in May of 2023. So that's where we are. Now, as I was saying, we're in the middle. I mean, the, uh, the world is in the midst of a possibility of a World War III um, between Russia and U Ukraine, where um, it'll affect 
other surrounding countries that's around Ukraine. If you know anything about history, um, uh, this could be the, one of the worst wars since World War II. Uh, NATO, as you know, uh, is, a, is a coalition of, of 30 countries um, that come together where they offer supplies and help to a neighboring co country who's at war. Russia is not part of NATO. Um, as you know, they're a communist country. And um, they are, right now, they are just tearing apart you, uh, Ukraine. And it's very, very sad. Now, what does this have to do with sports? Well, in boxing, heavyweight champion Alexandria Yusik has joined the Territorial Defense Battalion in Ukraine as the nation seeks to defend itself against the invasion from Russia. Now, the Olympic gold medalist is the, is the latest boxer to turn arms in Ukraine. Uh, Yusik, longtime friend, Vasily Lorachenko also joined the Territorial Defense Battalion over the weekend, last week weekend. Also, two Hall of Fame box, heavyweight boxer champion and former champion, Vitaly Kuklisko, the mayor of Ukraine, capital, um, yeah, the, of the, the capital, announced that he was taking up arms to defend against the invasion. His brother, fellow Hall of Famer and former heavyweight boxer. He had two brothers that was once uh, heavyweight champions in the boxing world. Uh, were also, um, his brother, uh, uh, what's his name? Wolderlif Karvisiko enlisted in Ukraine's reserve army earlier this month to in anticipation of the attack. So a lot of the Ukrainians um, are leaving homes. They're leaving their wives and children just to fight battle. They are just, this is a resilient country who will not back down. They know that many of them know that they may not be returned to their wives and children. And that's the sad part about it. So, um, you know, America, we, we should be thankful and grateful for who we are. But, there are. but there are people, there are countries who would rather give up their lives than to let somebody invade their homeland. Imagine somebody invading your homeland. Not, not only your, your country, but bomb your homes, your apartments, your, your houses, and, and anything that you own. So our prayers go out to the country of Ukraine as they continue to fight on. In the NFL, the NFL and the NFL Players Association has suspended all league-wide COVID-19 protocols effectively immediately, effective immediate, immediately, pausing two years of largely successful efforts to play through the pandemic. Many of the league's most severe protocols has been dropped by the end of 2021 season, including mandatory testing for asymptomatic players and staff, uh, requirements to wear contact tracing devices and distancing limitations in weight rooms and cafeterias. The employees will no longer face civilian testing, regardless of vaccination status or max requirements. Now, however, teams can choose to impose their own policy when it comes to masks, if they desire. Basketball news, I told you I had a lot to talk about. Uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adams said that he wants to see Kyrie Irving play basketball at Brooklyn Box. Barclay Center, um, but make no exception, he says, for the Brooklyn Nets unvaccinated guard, star guard, that he would not, that he, he, that he would send the wrong message to the rest of the city. The reason why he said that, because it would send the wrong message just to have an exception for one player when telling countless numbers of New York City employees that they can't work unless that they get the shot. So He's not exempt from this. Um, he's just like everybody else. So if you don't follow the rules, you don't be able to be employed. And the number to, continues to decrease, but there's good news. The city of New York is looking at March 7th as a date to remove vaccination requirements for indoor dining, fitness, and entertainment venues. All other vaccine mandates in New York City will remain in place at this time as they are. They have been vital to protection, to protecting the, the, uh, all of New York City 
uh, workers and all of New York City, period. So there you have it. So good news, hopefully around the corner. But in the meantime, you still have to wear your mask. You still have to sanitize. And you got to be careful. The schools are, are on the verge of removing the mask as well, too. So this day, March 4th in sports history, 1927, Babe Ruth becomes the highest paid play in Major League Baseball history when he signs a three-year deal worth $70,000 per season. Unbelievable. That was back in 1927. 1968, smoking Joe Frazier. Remember Joe Frazier? Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier. I want Joe Frazier. Takes his record to 20-0 and captures the vacant world heavyweight boxing title, defeating Buster Mathis in 11 rounds at where else? Madison Square Garden, the mecca of all arenas. 1976, 1976 Major League San Francisco Giants are bought for $8 million by Bob Laurie and Bud Purser. 1984, Pee Wee Reese and Rick Farrell elected to baseball's Hall of Fame. And in 1995, George Foreman, you know George Foreman, many of y'all don't remember George Foreman, but he has those George smoking, um, George Foreman's um, grill, where you can cook your food, your burgers and everything. Well, he loses the WBA boxing title back in 1995, refusing to fight Tony Tucker. And ladies and gentlemen, that is sports. I still have, uh one of my old uh, George Foreman grills. I still have it. Mm -hmm. I just haven't used it. It's been sitting on the counter for so long. It has, it's been there for so long. It has grease spots and dust and everything on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I use it just to cook some grilled cheese. If I'm in the mood for some grilled cheese, yeah. make a grilled cheese sandwich. You know? <laughs> yeah, but those are good grills. Yeah, I don't think, I think, are they still on the market? It's still on the market, yes. Yeah, they're still on the market. Um, they got it in different sizes. I, I have a small one just for my grilled cheese sandwiches. You know? Yeah, I have a small one too, but I haven't used it in so long. I'm, you know, uh, I, I probably won't even use it. It's just unless I give it a good cleaning. It's just that bad. It just has so much yeah. gook on it, you know. But well, you know, you could, well, you know, when I cook my grilled cheese before the George Foreman even came out, you can do it the old fashioned way. You take a frying pan, you put a little butter, and just smear it on there and just put the bread on top of the thing on a on pan and then you flip it over and the cheese is melting. This is good. That's exactly the way I do it. That's yeah. exactly the way I do it. It'll come out better that way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, I, I was just hoping like last night when I went to sleep, I was hoping to wake up with some good news about baseball, but you know, the nightmare is still on. So it's going to go into next week when they meet again. So that's where we are right now. Oh, hey, you know, when they meet again, maybe something will come out of it. We don't know. Because like you said, you know, it's, it's, it's about money now. And, and uh, you know, they don't want to lose a, a lot of money, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Some players don't, they're not as rich. As a matter of fact, the players compared to the owners, uh, they're, they're living in poverty compared yes. to the owners. Yes. You know. And of course, they want to they want to make the uh, they want to make the money. And I don't blame them. They want to make the money, too, because they're out there uh, getting injured, injured and, 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 and uh, fatigued and tired. And, and, and they still play the game anyway. Well, baseball got to just come up with a way to market their sport better than what they've been doing. Yeah. And um, you, you got bet the NBA is doing well in marketing the NFL. But where does everybody sit at, at Sunday? at one o'clock they sit right in front of their tv and they watch all these football games and the basketball season and 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 is is in real form now with the playoffs of pro approaching and baseball yeah yeah you gotta put a good product out, out there on the field yeah i like your background there the, with the window and i'm pretty sure the sun is shining through there i can't see the sun oh yeah I'm sure the sun is, is is there all right brian i guess we'll see you back here next week Okay, you enjoy your weekend, Pete, and everybody else out there, enjoy yourself. Most of all, be safe and keep Ukraine in your prayers. Absolutely. I'm going to talk more about that. Absolutely. Okay, take care of yourself, Brian. Take care. Okay, that's Brian, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Kemp with the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update. He's here every Friday. And of course, it's always a pleasure to have him along. Uh, he just wrapped up his uh part of the 2020 feature. The next part of the 2020 feature comes up 
DJ Pete, however, he's not in today, but uh, of course we're going to uh, cover him. We're gonna fill in and take care of that business. And of course, as I said, down the line, later on in the program, we'll have all of those great movies, Turner Classic Movies, and all of the movies that you like. We wanna set you up for the weekend in case you're not going out. And uh, so we're gonna do that. Okay, uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're gonna chime in, we really appreciate it. If not, uh, uh, that's okay. You can stay idle if you like, and it's, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but what we, want, what we want you to do too, ladies and gentlemen, is to, um, if you're gonna chime in, give us your weather forecast. Now, I'm gonna give you my weather forecast. Now, my weather forecast, uh, you don't have to worry about it if you're from New York, okay? I'll take care of that right now. It's 27 degrees. That's, that's what we have right now. It's 20, 27 degrees. It's cold outside. It's been cold out there here in New York for the past uh, couple of days. Uh, we've got sunshine for the moment. As a matter of fact, it looks like this. we got sunny skies. We'll have a high near 40 degrees. Winds will be southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, a few clouds will come down and we'll have a low 28 degrees. Winds will be light and variable for Saturday, tomorrow. Cloudy skies, high 47 degrees. Winds will be south-southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And Saturday night, if you're going out on the town or something like that, Please be aware that's going to be cloudy with occasional showers. Take that umbrella with you. We have a uh, light. It'll be late. Cloudy showers late at night. We'll have a low 42 degrees. Winds will be light and variable chance of rain will be 40%. And uh, as we wrap up our weekend, we go to Sunday. If you're going out to church, take that umbrella with you. Rain ending, though. But take the umbrella anyway. Rain ending, remaining cloudy. Uh, we'll have uh, near record high temperatures of 70 degrees. Last night on Talk Back Live, I told Brian, I said, send us some of that great weather your way. I think he did. 70 degrees for tomorrow. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chance of rain will be 80%. And of course, uh, we take a look at that current temperature once again. We have 27 degrees and it's sunny at the moment. And I'll take that because it's better than nothing. Okay, if you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, the name of the show is called Talk Back. Now, the name of the show is called Coffee Hour. <laughs> I do I do two different shows, folks, so you have to excuse me. The name of the show is called The Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen, and I am with you up until the top of the hour. And of course, you know we take care of everything. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, excuse me while I shoot up. Okay, um, but Brian was right. We talked about uh, Ukraine. We got a big problem there. There's a big problem there. And um, I wanna, we, we should send up our prayers to the people of Ukraine. They are brave people. They are brave. They're not taking it. They're not taking it. They are not taking it. They're not, back, they're not backing down. They may not have the armory, or for lack of a better term, uh, the, 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 the equipment, the fighting equipment as big as Russia does, but they're using what they have. Now, you know, you've already seen in the news already, uh, people are trying to escape Ukraine and uh, they cross the border and they wanna go elsewhere for their safety. The husbands send their wives and children there and they're staying around for the fight. In some cases, the wives are taking their children over across to stay with their family and friends, and then they're going to go back with their husbands to do the fight. They're brave. The women are brave. The men are brave. And no one's afraid. Uh, we had one guy already uh, sent a message to um, uh, Putin already. And the message to Putin was to um, uh, GFY. And you don't have to be a scholar to know what that means. He had told Putin that, GFY. And, um, you know, we, we don't know the, 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 the mental, uh, uh, I don't know if it's mental or what. We don't know the mental status of this guy. But, you know, I always thought he was off the wall anyway. A lot of people, and, you know, they, a lot of people are talking about this. This is, this is something. And, and, and as Brian said, it, 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 it could turn into World War III. And if that happens, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, the one person already said this is the end of the world as we know it. 
you know, but then you don't really know when the end of the world is going to come. You know, people just saying things, you know, uh, I guess metaphor, metaphorically, you know, but, you know, keep your, keep your prayers open for these people in Ukraine. I'm with you. I'm with you guys in Ukraine. And, uh, um, and, 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 you know, the, the people in Russia, they, they're shooting off their bombs. They don't care about human life. They're children out there trying to escape. And even the children are brave. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're afraid. They're afraid, but they're still brave. You could be afraid and brave at the same time, you know? So um, we, we just gotta make sure that we keep, uh, keep all of these people in prayer. Okay, it's now uh, 20 to the hour, and at this time always, as usual, DJ P comes in to bring us uh, information. Uh, he talks about the uh, entertainment and recites all of those birthdays to all of the people who are celebrating and uh, this, this week. As a matter of fact, we'll start with Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor, we, we don't have much today from DJ Pete, so we're gonna do the best we can with this. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor was born uh, February 27th. She just celebrated a birthday just last Sunday, as a matter of fact. She was born in 1932. Actress Elizabeth Taylor, who was also married to actor Richard Burton. And Elizabeth Taylor, she is known as Dame Elizabeth Rosemond Taylor. She was, uh, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you don't know this, but she uh, was born in the UK. She was born in London, England. And uh, she passed away March 23rd, which of course the anniversary of her death will be this month. She passed uh, 2011 at the age of 79 years old. Uh, she was an entrepreneur. She had her own um, uh, fragrance, fragrant line. You know, you've seen that on TV. It's still, it's still in existence, of course, you know, they keep that going. Her family, of course, keep that going. And um, she's a British actress. And of course, you might know her from all of those classic movies. She was with uh, Spencer Tracy in uh, Father of the Bride. She did that. She was with uh, um, the Mickey Rooney and National Velvet and did a lot of great movies. She was, uh, she did that movie, uh, uh, Virginia Woolf, uh, don't cry, Virginia Woolf, or something like that. You know, like that. Cry, Virginia Woolf. You know, that was a great movie, by the way. And uh, she did a lot of things. So uh, Elizabeth Taylor, uh, the 27th of February, was her birthday. And as we move along, ladies and gentlemen, well, let's see, we have coming up. Oh, okay. I tell you, ha cha cha cha. Jimmy Durante, Jimmy Durante was born on February 29th, 1904. And Jimmy Durante was known for his schnozzola. Uh, Jimmy Durante, oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's Jimmy Durante, I'm sorry. That's not Jimmy Durante, that's Jimmy Dorsey. I read that wrong. Jimmy Dorsey, born February 29th. Jimmy Dorsey and his brother Tommy Dorsey, they were music uh, musicians back in the big band era, you know them, Jimmy, Francis Dorsey, he was born February 29th. He passed away June 12th, 1957. And uh, he played jazz and all of those great big bands. And uh, a lot of people uh, played with him. Uh, I know Sinatra played with Tommy Dorsey's band. I know that. And uh, so those are the Dorsey brothers. And so, uh, so happy birthday to the late Jimmy Dorsey. And uh, wonderful, wonderful, uh, as, 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 as large as what we'll say, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we have another birthday here, Dinah Shaw. Dinah Shaw, of course, you remember her. She was born March 1st, 1917, Dinah Shaw. Of course, Dinah Shaw had her own show back in the 50s called The Dinah Shaw Show. She passed away February uh, 24th, 1994. Uh, and uh, she was a fantastic singer and a lot of people don't remember or maybe don't even care. She uh, allegedly courted uh, Burt Reynolds. I don't know if that's a fact or not. They used to kick that around. I don't want to say that's a fact, but uh, I, I understand that's what happened. She courted Burt Reynolds. That could be a fact. I don't know. I'm not going to say it as a fact, you know. 
And of course, she sang with Benny, the, the Dorsey brothers, Benny Goodman, and all those people. So yeah, Dinah Shore, Dinah Shore. I loved her singing. She was she was great. She had the. I remember she had back in the fifties called the Dinah Shore Chevy Show because the Chevrolet people used to sponsor her. Remember that? Those of you who are up there with me, you got to remember that, right? Okay. Last but not least, speaking of the big band, we don't come out of the big band era. The big band era here is uh, Glenn Miller, born March first. March 1st, 1904, and he passed away um, uh, December 15th, 1944. Until this day, they never found his body. I think he, uh, I think he was in a plane accident or something. They just never found the plane. They never found his body. Uh, they, I guess he was taking up what they called the rapture. And his real name was Alton Glenn Miller. Alton Glenn Miller. March 1st, 1904, and of course the disappearance again was uh, December 12th, uh, December 15th, 1944. That's scary. He composed Moon Intergo. He also composed uh, Moonlight Serenade, uh, Little Brown, and various other great songs that all of us remember back in the heyday of the big band. Yeah, that's what they did back then. And so that's what DJ Pete left us for this week. And of course, thank you, DJ Pete. And I have some birthdays of my own as we go down the line. We want to say a happy birthday to the late Bobby Kristen Brown. She passed away. That's Whitney Houston's daughter. She would have been 29 years old today. Actress Catherine O'Hara is 68 today. Musician Emilio Estevan, who's married to Gloria Estevan, he's 69 today. Uh, the late Bobby Womack, R&B singer, would have been 78. Actor John Hancock, he's the actor John Hancock, the African-American actor, would have been 81 today. The late Barbara McNair would have been 88. She was a great singer and uh, Barbara McNair, singer, 88 she would have been. Uh, South African singer Miriam Makiba would have been 90 years old today. And finally, the late John Garfield, the actor would have been 109 years old today. And those are the birthdays. And of course, uh, DJ Pete, if you listen to his radio program, if you haven't listened to it, maybe you should. He does have a radio program that comes on and you can catch him on uh, www.radio-airwave.co.uk. You can catch them, him there on Mondays between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Also, you can catch him on WMPG Radio in his hometown of Portland, Maine. And if you can't catch him on the radio, there's the website, the, or the radio station has a website called www.wmpg.org. And you can catch him there every other Tuesday between 8.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. And all times are Eastern and Canada and the United States. So thank you, DJ Pete. And that wraps up this part of the 2020 feature. And we hope that DJ Pete will be back here live in living color here on the air with us right here. In case you're just, just joining us, the name of the show is called The Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen, and we are having, having coffee today and great conversation. So ladies and gentlemen, excuse me while I shoot up. Now, guys, if you're just joining us for the very first time, don't make it your last time. And if you're a member and been with us for a while, you know what to do. Inform your friends. Let them know that we're out here. Uh, have them to tune in each week. Have them become part of us. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, on, on my people who are watching us on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And that, that'll be a good thing because every time you subscribe, of course, you'll never miss a show. We post things, you'll get that information. Every time we post something or we do live shows or whatever it is that we do, and whatever information that we lay out on YouTube, you will get it, you will be notified, right? You get notification on that on your computer or on your telephone, however you watch the show. And those of you who are watching us on Facebook, well, Facebook is, I uh, wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about Facebook. Because as you already know, we're not broadcasting on Facebook and we're not gonna be broadcasting on Facebook for a while. Okay, now those of you who have followed this show for a long time already know the deal, right? 
you know that we were locked up for 30 days. Facebook put us away for 30 days. All right. And that wasn't long ago. That was what somewhere in, uh, I can't remember the month, but uh, it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. They put us away for 30 days. Couldn't broadcast for 30 days. And um, it was because of some kind of post that had nothing to do with anything and had no contents of uh, offending people or anything like that. Now we are in jail once again. Facebook did that because of, again, another post that had nothing to do with anything, had no contents of uh, offending anyone or anything. No curse words, no nothing, nothing like that. It was just a post of a picture uh, that they didn't agree with. They thought that it was uh, something that was not appropriate for, for their community or whatever their community is, all right? And so we're off the air on YouTube, but here, here's the deal, here's the deal. This show, if you're watching us live here on Instagram, you're watching us live here on YouTube, this show, this very show will be posted on Facebook, all right? It's a difference to, to have it posted uh, as a rerun than to have it live. So we, we are not live with them and we won't be. And they have us, by the way, I didn't mention it, for initially 59 days, that's two months. That's two months. Okay, so we killed off two days away. We're down to 57 days now. We're at 57 days to go, 57 days to go before we go back on the air. So I'm, I'm factoring in everything. I'm factoring in the fact that it's two months and it will be, I would, I factor in, it will be counting. It will be the first week, the first week in May when we will return to Facebook Live. The first week in May, I figured it out. I counted it out. I counted the days. The first week in May, we're going to come back uh, and uh, do live on Facebook. Now, you know, <laughs> a lot of people, it's not just me, you know, and I'm not going to throw a pity party. I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm not going to have you to feel sorry for me because this show is going to go on with or without Facebook. Uh, the, the thing I, I, I just didn't understand is, okay, fine. You know, lock me up. I may have deserved it. I may not have deserved it. I don't know. They felt I did. I can't contest it because there's no information uh, to relate to them. You know, and I guess they made sure of that. And even if it was, they don't respond anyway. You ever notice that when you try to get in touch with the people of Facebook and they, uh, they don't get back to you. They won't get back to you. You know, so it's like hiding behind a shield. You know, uh, you can email me all you want, but I, I don't want to hear it. I'm keeping my ears shut. La, 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 la. Um, and so we're talking about professional, professional performance, professionality, you know, if you will. And that's one of the things that they're lacking. And it's not, it's not just this thing that we're talking about now. We're also talking about uh, 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 past things that happened. Uh, Facebook used to present things that were great, that the public liked, and they take it away. Just for instance, like I told you, we used to do uh, the, the show uh, split screen. You can see DJ Pete, you can see Brian while they're doing their sports. That's one of the reasons why we go on Zoom now, so we could have that magic back. So that's that's all good. They take that away. Uh, we used to do the radio thing through Facebook. They took that away. And that's why uh, Talk Back Live was, was once a radio show. It's now a TV show. I don't mind. Maybe it's better that way. I'm not going to look back, that's for sure. Even if they bring back the radio part, I'm not going to look back. You know, that's progress, progress, you know, because when radio was at, in its heyday, they didn't have TV. And when they bought TV, everybody rushed the TV. So, you know, I don't want to look back. But, you know, I'm, I was just hoping that they would give me some kind of valid reason why they did it. It took them two years, two years, ladies and gentlemen, two years to say, you know, we don't like this. And the first time they put us in for 30 days, it, it, that must have been about uh, four or five years. 
when that thing was posted, maybe less than that, I'm not sure. All right, but we're talking about years. We're not talking about months. We're not talking about days. We're not talking about weeks. We're talking about years, two years, 2020, that post that was posted. And now they, they cut my throat. And they said, no, we're gonna, we're gonna take that away from you for 59 days. All right, no broadcasting for 59 days. I couldn't even, and this is strange, and let me explain this to you. Yesterday morning, I discovered that I couldn't even watch someone else's show that do live shows. Because I like to watch the other shows too that come on Facebook. I love to watch them. I couldn't even watch the show. This morning, I tried it again. Guess what? I was able to watch someone's show. Can someone tell me <laughs> what's going on? All right. Now they also say 59 days, which is now 57 days, 57 days, no advertising. All right. As you guys already know, before the show goes on the air, I put a little uh, uh, promo of the show on Facebook so I could get you guys to swing over here. You know, you saw that promo. Uh, today's promo, the Coffee Hour promo, it's there. I, I post it every week. It posted. They also told me that whenever you post something, it goes at the bottom as opposed to go to the top. And it did for a while, but guess what? I post something now, it comes at the top. Maybe, just maybe, it's not likely, it's a long shot. Just maybe it will cancel out that, the remaining of 57 days and put me back on the air. I doubt that though, I doubt that. Okay, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, you know, something, uh, it, it's, 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 it's all become a train wreck. And the certain thing you say is like taking, almost taking away your freedom of speech, your freedom of expression, which of course we're all entitled to in this country. And it's almost like, it seems like to me, now you tell me if I'm wrong, Facebook, you won't say it because you won't get back to me. But it seems to me it's like you want to take that away from people, which you can't do. That's that's a violation. You can't take away freedom of speech, freedom of expression. It's not like we said, I don't like that person, so I'm going to go out there and kill him. That's a no-no. All right. And I understand you could that's that's grounds for taking people off Facebook altogether, off social media altogether. And it wasn't like that. Okay, so we got all of those days left, and so that's how it's going to be. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Facebook, thank you so much for your hospitality. Okay, movies, ladies and gentlemen, you know all about those movies. We have a few before we go off the air and we're gonna start telling you about what we have this week. And we'll start off going to 1971 with the French Connection starring Gene Hackman and Roy Schreider. And that's coming on Turner Classic Movies. That's tonight at 10, 15 p.m. Eastern. So get your popcorn, peanuts, and Cracker Jacks out and get ready to watch that movie, The French Connection. We also have The Omen from the Macabre, 1976, Gregory Peck and Lee Remick. And that comes on Turner Classic Movies. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning at 2.30 a.m. Eastern. And of course, if you don't want to stay up that late or you can't stay up that late, of course, you can always uh, DVR it and watch it at a later time. Citizens Kane, 1941, Austin Wells, that's with Joseph Cotton, that comes on Turner Classic Movie, that's on Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern, and Pillow Talk from 1959 with Rock Hudson and Doris Day, that comes on Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, and those are the movies of the week. Now, you can also check out more movies on Turner Classic Movies, you can go there and check out the program guide. There may be other movies, but these are my picks. There may be other that you may be interested in, and I'm pretty sure they are. And of course, there's also Movie On Demand. There's a chock full of movies dating back from the 30s to 40s or 50s or 60s. A lot of movies, you go down the list and watch those. And of course, if you like, of course, sports, there are a lot of networks on, you can go and check out the delayed sports. If you didn't catch, catch it in real time, for instance, I like wrestling. You know, if I miss a wrestling match, I could always go on the next day and check it out on that particular network. So there you have it, all of those classic movies. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy your weekend. It's time for me to wrap it up. I will be back here uh, next week, next Friday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern for more. Brian Kent will be around with me. 
uh, for uh, his part of the 2020 feature along with DJ Pete 20 to the hour. And there will be sports and entertainment news. And of course, more movies I'll have to tell you about and a lot of other things. Uh, you could also catch me Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern uh, right here live on Talkback Live. And uh, of course, uh, you can check that out. That's Thursday, 8 p.m. And of course, we'll be broadcasting on YouTube and Instagram. Of course, every all of the reruns will wind up on Facebook too as well. Ladies and gentlemen, have yourself a wonderful, wonderful weekday, a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, and I will catch you all back here next week. Take care of yourself. So long. Bye-bye.